week's lab is looking at carbohydrates, um, so different types of sugars, and we will be seeing some of their different chemical reactions. Um, we're skipping part A, so not looking at any food samples, so we're going to jump right into part B, which is Sully Wanoff's test for ketosis. You might want to pause it a second here. This tells you which test tubes um, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are all day. Um, so again, Sally Wanoff's test. Um, we're just going to follow the procedure here for part B. So first we're going to add one milliliter of sugar solution to each test tube. So that was glucose going into the first test tube. Going into the second test tube is fructose, fruit sugar. Going into the third test tube will be sucrose, which is table sugar, just dissolved up in water. All of these are sugars dissolved in water. Um, the fourth sugar is maltose. And the final um, sugar is a polysaccharide starch. And you can see starch doesn't fully dissolve, so the solution was a little bit cloudy on that. Um, a, B, C, D, and E are the five unknowns you'll be figuring out today, so we don't know what sugars they are, um, but I've already filled those up. Um, so you're going to be looking for um, a comparison between those five unknowns and the known sugars all day long. Um, we're going to add Sally Wanoff's reagent. Um, it has a strong acid in it, so we would want to be careful with this in lab if you were doing this. Um, we add one milliliter of this reagent to each test tube. And then we've already got a hot water bath going, um, and so we're going to heat these. Heat speeds up reactions. Um, so we're going to heat our unknowns, and we're going to heat our knowns um, in some boiling water. Um, you want to watch for a color change in these. Um, a dark orange or red color would be a positive test for ketosis. And we will heat these for five minutes, so you might see some color change over the course of five minutes. Um, note that I've edited this to make it take less than five minutes. But you can start to see a bit of yellow, a bit of pink start to darken here um, as time is going. Um, getting even darker. And the bubbles there are outside of the test tubes. That's just the boiling water. So we heat it, and you'll see these in a minute, but that A came out pretty dark red, B, not much color, C, got some color, D, not much happening there. If we heat these long enough, they would all react and start to turn red, so that's why we don't. Um, so you can see the results there, lots of color in A and C, right? And we're hoping that will match some of our known sugars here, um, one through five. So I'm gonna carefully take those out. So there's one, not much color, Two, dark red color. Remember that dark red is a positive test for ketosis, so there must be a ketone in that sugar. Um, three, positive. Four, not seeing much. And five. So that was Sally Wanoff's test for ketosis. Um, we want to test lots of different aspects of these um, sugars. Um, here again were those um, unknown results for the ketosis. So now we're going to do Benedict's test for reducing sugars. Um, reducing sugars are sugars that can be oxidized. And so these are going to be sugars um, that usually have a free um, aldehyde that can be oxidized is most often what you'll see. Um, adding the same sugars, so sucrose again in number three. Um, four will be maltose. Maltose is just two glucoses connected to each other, um, and so when we break down starches, you get um, a little bit of malt flavor um, because of the maltose sugar. So I've got my known sugars here. Um, we're going to add Benedict's solution to these now. Benedict's solution um, will add one mil of each of those. Notice that that blue color is just part of it. Um, here's my unknowns. Again, same A, B, C, D, E sugars that I grabbed. Um, the blue is not a positive test. That's just because there's some copper in the Benedict solution. So I have my same boiling water bath ready. Um, again, I'm going to give each of these some heat for five minutes and watch how they change as the reaction goes. So this time I'm looking for a um, reddish solid to form if there's a lot of sugar. If there's less sugar, I'll see some green and yellow kind of solids form. Again, this is not true to time, it was edited, but you can start to see a little bit of yellow solid forming in some of those test tubes. 
and we'll take a closer look at them when they're done with this heating period. The ones that are staying blue and transparent, that would be no reaction. You can see now the yellow solids are becoming orange in some of the test tubes. You can tell there's a solid there because it's opaque, meaning you can't see through it. Um, so solids, even if you can't see the solid at the bottom, if you can't see through the test tube, that means there's a solid there. Um, and you can see like those orange ones, those look pretty similar to each other, right? And that's what we're looking for is something that looks the same between the known and the unknown. Um, colors getting darker with a little bit more heat. Getting ready to take these out pretty soon. This is just a fun one to watch. It's, it's cool colors to see. Um, and on the first page of your experiment, you have um, some test results that you can compare these to, the different colors and what percent of glucose they correspond to. So test tube A, not much color there. Um, test tube B, we'll get a closer look in a minute, just a touch. Um, that would probably not be a positive test. Um, here's one through five, so you might want to pause that um, so you can get a closer look at it. And then here's A through E. Um, those two on the left, I would say, are not positive, or B, you might say, just has a very slight amount of glucose in it, um, or not glucose, but oxidizing, reducing sugar, sorry. Um, on to part D now. We're doing Barfoot's test for monosaccharides. So these are going to be sugars that just have one ring, right? That's what a monosaccharide is. So we're going to add those same sugars, fructose in test tube 2, sucrose in test tube 3, maltose coming in in test tube 4, and then we'll have our cloudy starch solution for test tube 5. So for Barfoods, we've added those sugars. Now we're going to add Barfoods solution. Um, again, this has some copper in it, and that's why it's a blue solution. The blue doesn't mean there's been a reaction. It just means that we have the original Barfoods reagent. So there's one through five. I've prepared um, A through E, the unknowns, off screen for you. And so now I'm going to be ready to heat these um, for two to three minutes a little different angle on the heating this time. Cinem cinematography is just amazing on these videos. I think you'll have to agree with me. <laughs> this was done in such a time crunch. Um, so we're going to watch those heat for um, a few minutes here. Again, um, it's been edited to speed it up, but we're looking for a dark red precipitate or solid on the bottom. That would be a positive test for a monosaccharide. Not seeing much here initially, um, but keep your eyes on it. You can see some of those blues starting to sort of change color, and those are probably going to be our reactions, like one and two look a bit reactive there. Again, the heat helps molecules move faster, so the heat speeds up these reactions, and we, we need that um, help on all of these. Now you can start to see some more red showing up. Here's your final results, one through five. Um, one and two definitely have some red solid in them. Three, four, and five are looking nice and blue and transparent. Um, here is A through E, and again, you can see in C and in E, some dark red solid there at the bottom. The others, we don't see any red solid in, so blue means nothing changed. So one last round, we've cleaned the test tubes out. We're gonna do the iodine test for starch now. Um, this one you do not heat, it's just going to be a quick instantaneous reaction. So we're going to put our sugars in, glucose again, and I believe it was fructose number two, sucrose in three, maltose coming in in four, and starch coming in to test tube five. So on this we're going to add just a couple drops of iodine solution. This is the same iodine you would have at home. Um, when I add a few drops, iodine is already normally yellow, so that yellowish tinge doesn't mean anything. That's a negative test for polysaccharides. Um, keep adding to each of these. And here you see something entirely different. That is a very vivid, positive test for a polysaccharide. It's like a deep purple, blue kind of color. Um, these others, even if I mix them around, don't turn that deep 
purple color. Here's the same test on my unknowns. Um, so we're looking again for that purple color means I have a polysaccharide present. So not seeing a polysaccharide there. Very obvious purple. Again, the yellow is just the color of the iodine. And so this is um, some really solid data for you, right? You should be able to connect one of your unknowns um, to your known. So now you want to analyze your data, match each unknown to one of the known sugars. Um, it should match for all the tests. So, and that will wrap up our lab. Thank you for watching.